What's up, Dragon Brood? Uh, sorry about the delay in getting this video out. We've had a lot going on, uh, especially a lot going on with my gaming channel. But particularly, we've had a lot going on in our backyard uh, with our birds and plants and stuff. Actually, this is the less crazy of the news. But we discovered we had a bit of a rat problem, or maybe just a mouse problem. And it was a little disturbing. We came out, saw a couple of holes where, you know, some mice had probably burrowed in under the ground. So we wanted to check that out. Uh, and then it became consistent, like, basically did the test of just to make sure. Was it just like a mole or something else? So, like, covered up the holes, looked to see the next day or the day after they were dug out again. So we knew for sure we had an active mouse problem. So what we had to do then is decide how to best attack the issue. Because the first thing is you want to get rid of them as soon as possible. They can actually cause problems for your birds by leaving their fecal matter or possibly even biting or whatever the birds. Though, depending on where they've been, they could have issues or carry some poison if they got something from somewhere else and your birds could potentially eat them and that's not good either. The other is trying to decide, well, do we want to poison them or not? And then is that going to be dangerous to the birds that we have? Like, that becomes a problem. So what I ended up finding was this brand here. I believe it's called Rat X. And after reading through it, I went down to... And this is something you could get anywhere. I got it at our local, uh, like, animal feed store. Wasn't a big deal. I guess tractor supply, some people call it down south. But, yeah, it wasn't very expensive. It was just a few bucks. And they come in different size pouches. I didn't think we needed a whole lot, so I got this particular one. Our issue came down to the fact that, well, first let me say, the reason I chose it is on the package, it actually does say that it's safe to use around poultry and other animals. So that was a big deal because I knew if we did leave some out or I missed one or two pieces and the chickens ate it, there would be no fear of losing a chicken. So that was actually pretty big. Then I read some reviews online and people seemed to be mixed on how effective it was, but it, the safety issue was pretty much a non-issue. So that was my biggest concern. Now, once we went and started using it, the thing we ran into is that we're in a rainy season. So, and honestly, that's been part of the other issue. I wasn't able to get good footage of anything because it literally has rained every day, but like two in the last, I think, 14 days or something. It's been crazy. So it's rained a lot. And the problem with this particular uh, I guess we'll call it poison, is that if it gets wet, it kind of puffs up and becomes like weird and mushy and doesn't really hold its integrity. So I didn't know if that was going to be appealing to the mice or not. I mean, <laughs> if it, because it, it, the size and shape it looks, it almost mimics some of the food that we have out for the chickens. So that was a concern because I didn't know how actively or how interested the mice were going to be in it. So I tried to find some dry spots, put some in. First night, it looked like some of it got eaten, but then, you know, the rest was all gross. So I just covered it up, buried it, came up with the plan the next day that I have these deck boxes that I actually have around from playing cards and stuff, and I was able to put some inside one of the boxes and leave it kind of like half open so it's at least protected from the elements, and that helped. It looked like the next night, more of it got eaten. And there was a little bit that I guess had rolled out to the edge and got wet, and that was okay. But during each of this, we wanted each night of this, we wanted to also make sure that we were taking every precaution as we could to discourage the mice from showing up. So where I showed you previously, we had our, our Rubbermaid trash can with the, uh, uh, the PVC pipe openings. We went ahead and got caps for each of the PVC pipes. Nothing special, just something that we could pick up down at Lowe's. I believe they cost like $4 or $5 each. Maybe. They weren't crazy expensive. Uh, we had to get three of them to cover each of the openings. And then that guaranteed that each night we're kind of driving the mice to the only food source. Right? We cover everything up so if they're used to coming in trying to get some of that, there will be no opportunity to get that so they're forced to eat the other thing that's there. And that seemed to have worked. Now, the downside was each night we had to put the birds up, wait till they were done eating, went into the coop, we actually shut them in so they couldn't come out and eat the poison that we were putting out. And we had to cap off the feed. And then the next morning, when we go out, we have to open it up, let the birds back out, uncap the feed. You know, and that was kind of the process for the next three, four days, I think we did that. Uh, but I will say, now, the mice are gone. 
I haven't seen a new hole burrowed in in days and doesn't appear to be any more food being eaten. So I guess either they quit coming because there was no access to food or two, they ate enough of the poison and died. I don't, I don't know which it is, <laughs> but either way, we don't have a mouse problem. So if you run into a mouse problem around your chickens, here's a solution. I will say it's going to be less of a problem for those of you that have some type of closed in or raised surface because the mice are just gonna have a harder time getting in. Because of the way we're set up, we're outdoors, where they're pinned in, so there is access for them to actually get direct contact by just burrowing in through the ground. So that is a difference depending on how your setup is. So that's, if you're thinking about setting up a chicken coop or chicken pen, that is something to consider, is anytime you can be elevated and have everything safely sealed and boarded, it is gonna be harder to get any outside rodents or pests into your area where your chickens are at. Now, I did tell you that was the less crazy of two things that happened since I last posted a video. Well, I know this is going to be hard to believe because those of you that have followed me before know that we have had a rooster show up, which we had to get rid of because we can't have roosters. Just came out of nowhere. Then we had another rooster show up. We also had to get rid of because we can't have roosters. It also came out of nowhere. Then we had a hen show up, which was Carnage, who we actually kept, because conveniently we had lost a chicken a few days before, and Carnage is actually doing well, by the way. Still recovered, no uh, reinfections or anything, she's, she's doing great. But then, <laughs> you're not going to believe this, but I guess about four or five days ago it was, we had yet another hen show up in our yard. And this one was a small Bantam hen. And Bantam breeds being a much smaller breed of chicken, whereas our normal chickens are this size, she's about this size. Uh, the problem with that is we can't really keep her with our other chickens because they're likely just going to attack her, pick on her, whatever, because she's going to be the bottom of the pecking order. She's not going to be able to defend herself. Like, everything they do, she will get dominated or bounced around because there's no others like her. So we immediately started looking around. We found some uh, groups online in the local area and found somebody we could just give her to. So we arranged a drop-off. The new owners were very happy. We were good to be rid of her, and she has a happy home. The thing that was concerning was that we didn't know where she came from. So we started, after this, we kind of said, okay, this is the fourth time a chicken has just shown up in our yard. Why don't we go around and see if somebody does have chickens that we just don't know about? Like, maybe we don't hear them, we don't see them, Maybe somebody's raising them and we can tell them like, hey, some of your birds are getting out and coming into our yard, right? Because we live in an area where we have a couple of neighbors, but they're not really right on top of us. And then there's people that live kind of behind us. But again, they're not right next to us. So we don't really know them that well. So we had to kind of drive around and we found some dead end areas or whatever. But either nobody looked like they had any type of way to store chickens or... They had fences that were high enough we couldn't really see around, but they were also far enough with all their fences looking like they're in really good order and everything else, and there would be no convenient way for them to get to us. The other thing was, I think I've mentioned this before, we also live in a neighborhood or an area that has several animals. Like, we have neighbors with dogs. There's some stray cats, as evidence we've had one Parker's happy butt in our backyard before. So we have no idea that even if they could get out of somebody's fence, where did they come from? How did they survive? Like, they would have to go through multiple fences, survive multiple not seeing them or whatever, and still end up in our yard. That's the mind-blowing part. Like, they would have to come from somewhere that's not immediately next to us within two to three homes and made a reasonable trek to get to us. So, I don't know. Now, the good news for the chickens, they manage to land in a place where there's people who care about animals and birds and take care of them. So, eh, you know, it's a weird thing. But the other thing, too, that was also concerning about this Bantam hen that we got was that she was also very friendly. Like, immediately when she saw us, she wanted to run over to a person, right? So this told us that, okay, not only is she comfortable being around humans, she's been handled by humans a lot, maybe even since birth. So she immediately ran up, like we took pictures, of, like she's just sitting on our arms with no problem issues whatsoever. So it's a very weird situation that if somebody, like this is almost like somebody's indoor pet. That's how comfortable she was. And that had us wondering like, hey, did she get out of somebody's house? Did somebody maybe just move here and lost a bird? But 
you know, we asked around and like I said, we put stuff on the local groups and nobody was missing one. So we just gave her to somebody who wanted one after a couple of days. And to this day, nobody's come asking or questioning. So I don't know. It's a weird time. It's a weird time at the Power Dragon household when it comes to chickens. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Like, it's just amazing that this keeps happening. But I will say, we at least found a happy home for her, and that was really good. But anyway, I figured this was kind of a fun two-part video. The first was telling you, hey, here's some things you could do if you have a mouse problem, and here's how we got rid of ours. The other is, hey, we had another chicken for the fourth time, but we found a home for her. We're not keeping that one. Though, as spring comes around, we will probably be adding an additional chicken or two to our brood. But that's also on hold, because we may have some home stuff going on that we're going to be dealing with first. But if that comes to be, I will co cover that in another video. I think that's it for now. If you haven't, please remember to like this video, hit the subscribe button, and come back and see us sometime. That's all I have for you for now. We'll see you next time.